guys, what's up? This is the Reaper Life, and I'm going to be showing you guys how to model a fork <laughs> inside a Blender 3D Cycles Render version 2.78. So let's get started. Alright, so I'm in the Blender startup file here. Just a, a cube, delete it, switch it to Cycles Render. Hit in to bring up this tool display here. Um, I already have a image downloaded from Google of a spoon, fork, and knife set. So yeah, I'm gonna use it as a template to model from. Yeah. All right. start from a cube and first things first we're gonna want to go like this control R in edit mode right down the middle and add an edge loop and then select either the left or the right side depending on which side you like to work on um, matter of fact that'd be my right I like to work on my right so delete the whoops not the vertices delete the faces so you delete half your cube essentially and right now we're setting it up to where it mirrors uh, whatever we do um, on the right side so we only have to set it up once and it'll be symmetrical but uh, you go up here and you go to your wrench tab modifiers tab add a modifier and you go to mirror modifier and then clipping and X, depending on which side you deleted it or made your edge loop, it'll be a different axis. Uh, so, yeah. But alright, so now whatever we do on the right side, it'll happen on the left. So, we only have to set it up once. Alright. Seeing how I am going to be setting up the fork on this image right now, I'm going to move the background image a little bit so uh, that the fork is right in the middle. There we go, right in the middle. Alright. Basically, we're going to get the top of the square, or the cube, right to where the uh, um, right where the fork uh, points start, and the bottom will be just before the bottom of the fork. You guys will see in a minute why we are doing it that way. And yeah. Alright, we need to add some more edge loops here. So remember, whatever I'm doing on the right side um, happens um, on the left. And wait a minute, why am I getting this weird edge split here? Had to move it closer so it merges the mirror. Yep. Looks like the mirror was, uh, like the mesh was a little too far away and it's messing with the mirror. Let's make sure it's not doing that anymore. Okay. Sorry about that. But yeah, we're adding more edge loops here, more geometry to work with. Um, hold on a second. All right. For 
for some reason it is messing with me here on the uh, the merging of the mirror modifier right here and the clipping because it's supposed to clip right in the middle and know that it's the right in the middle of the mesh so but yeah and looks like it's working just fine for me now all right giving me more more geometry to work from here. My picture's off just a little bit. There we go. Oh, dang it. good enough Okay, now the reason why we didn't model all the way down to the bottom of the uh, fork here is because we're going to select these face, the face at the bottom, okay, and we are going to E to extrude and come down right to where it is, and then S and X to scale along the X axis. Scale those down. Oh, and since I've been only working in the front view, we have a huge model on the side here, so that's easily fixable. Matter of fact, we just scaled the whole thing by Y. All right. There we go. Got the start of the fork coming along here. Alrighty, so now that we have the handle and the start of the points for the forks, um, we're going to control R and add some edge loops right down the middle. And then Let's see here. Select these two faces, or the the face at the top there, and hit E to extrude. E to extrude again. Then we scale by the X. E to extrude one more time. And then we scale by the X again. Maybe a little bit more down of the X there, so it's more of a point. It's getting there. I'm going to scale her down the Y a little bit, so she is a little thinner. Alright. So now we are going to select these two faces here or this face, well, I say that because I'm in doing the mirror, so everything I select on the right, it's selecting on the left, so my bad. Select this face here, and then we're going to do the same thing, E to extrude. Oh no, it's clipping it. Hmm. Maybe turn off clipping for this one, and then... Alt S to scale along the normal. Hmm. Let's see here. 
It's like a strategy game at the same time, trying to figure out how you want to uh, go about modeling and designing or laying out the geometry of the mesh. One moment, guys. I gotta change the music in the background. So, one moment, please. Good music is just as important as good design and good model. <laughs> Alright, um, so let you guys see what I see again. Okay. Alright, so where we left off, I'm going to control Z real quick and go back so it deletes that uh, face there. Hmm. I'm going to have to ha add a uh, another control or another edge loop right down the middle so that it separates the middle of the mesh here. Um, from the face that I want to select, which would be this one right here. And wait a minute. Uh oh. because we almost had yeah there we go uh, what do they call it like a indigon or something like that uh, it's where it has like five points five or more points connecting to one vertice which is a vertice dot here that's just a vertice and then if I go into edge select mode I grab an edge and it's like the entire black line or face select mode and but yeah, it the if you have like a five star or a six star where one vertice controls multiple edge lines, then you lose control over your mesh because the more it's connecting to, it's harder to make a smoother and cleaner looking design. But yeah, I had to backspace a couple times just to um, make sure that I didn't have that. But I am going to do what I was just doing, which was adding an edge loop. <clears throat> and if you set the edge loop in and you're like, ah, oh, that's not where I want it to be, you just double tap G and you're sliding it down the edge loop again. But, uh, yeah. Grab this face here. With clipping off. Yep. And before I extrude that, I'm going to add one more edge loop in between the other um, the other uh, blade or the other point of the fork. That way there's a nice space in between it. Okay. Wait a minute. Uh oh. Alright. So I accidentally had that edge loop selected when I uh, only wanted this face selected. My bad. <laughs> um, yeah. And then Alt S, right? Or no, I scaled along the X. Yep. 
to scale along the X. And just to make sure it's the same height or damn near close. And then S and X to sail along the X axis there. Okay. Alright, how many faces are we? 122 faces. Not bad. And we still have a little bit of touch up to do because um, the fork is, um, you know, not flat like that. So we're going to add that in right now. And in edit mode, if you hit A, uh, it'll select everything or deselect everything. I'm holding Alt right now to and right click um, to select an edge loop there. Edge loop, control loop, whatever. <laughs> so, yeah. Oops. I need to be in wireframe view while I'm selecting it. So I'm selecting the other vertices below it as well. flat shaded mode there and this is still too thick here so yeah whoops my A to select everything in edit mode and scale by the Y axis make her skinnier Hmm. All right, so I gotta select the model accordingly here, and then scale it by the Y because, um, basically, the normal of these vertices and faces, um, you can see them in wireframe view that they're heading, you know, they're level right now. The the ver uh, the normal of the edge line or the vertices and so when I go to scale them if I were to select these and I go to scale them it's scaling them flat right along the axis but if I were to uh, grab these ones that are kinda tilted or something you know it just it it changes the model when I select it all um, if I were to select it all and then scale it by Y it um it gives me a different effect and it's not a very good effect for when you're trying to scale um uh, control scale there so let me go ahead and scale these three here It's still in flat shaded, so we're going to hit smooth shaded. It looks a little better. That's, uh, that's how it looks like it when it's rendered right now. But uh, we're going to go to the world tab here and tell it to use nodes. And we're just going to make the world a little darker. And then 
with the fork selected, we're going to go to the materials tab up here, add new material, call it base color. And we're going to change the shader surface to an anisotropic and change the distribution roughness of 111. It's usually what I run. Or 0 0.11. 0 0.111, my bad. <laughs> um, yeah. And I'm pretty sure the world right now is controlling how anisotropic it's looking. So, I just gotta make a plane real quick. Just to have some, uh, something to have light and reflections off of right now. Uh, wrong way. R, rotate. And then x axis minus 90 degrees. Okay, that's better. It's a little better. I would still like some more, um, you know, a little bit more design in here, a little bit more um, curves. How do I say it? To where it's not so so flat looking, if that makes sense. <laughs> um, so I'm going to add a subdivision surface and basically what that does is it, if I were to select the entire mesh in edit mode and you see the geometry I have now of the lines which make up the model, if I were to subdivide that it adds more geometry for me which adds the total face count of the uh, model higher and increases the face count of the model but I don't want to do it that way because that's not very controlled um, that's not the best way to go about modeling I would say maybe maybe in some cases but uh, not the one I'm looking for right now but but yeah over here you add a uh, subdivision surface modifier and under the modifier tab and the higher the view is how how much it uh, subdivides it in your viewport. Um, in the render, that's how much it's gonna, if I were to go over here and hit render through the camera, what the camera sees, um, it would uh, show you that many subdivisions in the render. So you can basically just kind of see in the view, if I set it to half, you can kind of see what it's gonna do to the effect, which uh, one is good enough in my case, so. But, uh, yeah. So, we set up the material slot because um, it, all we needed is one. I made a knife the other day and I needed multiple material slots because it had a couple knife or uh, metal pins inside the knife. It was a steak knife. And, um, <clears throat> uh, yeah, so it had multiple material slots which was a little bit more complicated than uh, this but uh, yeah you can see just the process of how you would go about making um, you know a model in model in 3d design and blender But yeah, so yeah, I hope you guys learned something from this, or I gave you guys some ideas, or, um, you know, entertained you guys with my 3D design here. But uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching, and uh, feel free to leave a like, comment, or subscribe on how I did, or what I didn't do, um, or what you would like to see more of. Uh, yeah, this is The Reaper Life, signing off.